care was literally Romney care. Right now, the left says, oh, the Heritage Foundation, it's so dangerous, Project 2025. Well, brother, they're the ones who wrote Obamacare. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you say that's the greatest change in the world, right? Not so they, Honestly, that's why the Democrats, yeah, I'll take the 10% change overall. Okay. I think Biden did about 15%. Obama did 5%. But yeah, no, it's on they're going to also march you backwards by deregulating like Clinton did and Obama did right, bro, the bank bro. bail. Bear with me a little bit, guys. Bear with me. Let's go to project2025.org because it's, it's like I said, it's made by the Heritage Foundation, right? And you can pretty much go to, well, the truth about Project 2025, and it kind of break things down for you, right? So let's go to debunking the lies, right? You know, Project 2025 is a plan from Trump. That's false. Like, all this good stuff from Project 2025 that y'all have heard about, yeah, that's it's actually a lie. They lied to you about Project 2025 because it's crazy how Obama can follow the Heritage Foundation, but Trump disavows it and... Oh, okay, y'all can't believe that? Oh, man. Man, man, man. Ain't that crazy. But, yeah, if you're looking, ban books and circular... <laughs> ban books on curriculum about slavery, that's false. And civil rights, false. NDI protection, that's false. And this is project2025.org. So this is their whole site. And no fault divorce, that's also false. Ban IVS, that was false. Ban contraceptives, also false. The only wild thing that a lot of people might not like is, well, how long pornography. So, yeah. Yeah, that, and you, let's be real. How long in pornography, as much as I hate pornography and I hate what it does to the male mind and the female mind, it is, it, 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 it's in our industry, bro. It's a strong part of our economy. If we pulled away the OF and the corn stars and all that, we'd have a lot of homeless people the next day. Like, I'll be real with you. It'd be kind of effed up. Raise prescription drug prices, false. And Affordable Care Act, that's also false. It's like, and free and discounted school lunch programs, false. Shut down the Department of Education. No, that's actually true. They do want to shut down the Department of Education. That is a bit crazy. I wonder why, but I, I well, let's be real. They kind of want to leave it up to the parents now, because apparently the Department of Education is, well, they're kind of getting a little bit too authoritarian of what they believe they can show your kid or have your kid believe. Cut Social Security. And that's also false. Raise the retirement age. That's also false. So, yeah. There's a lot of things about that that he told you. False. But let's get back to it. Appreciate y'all for bearing with me through that. Make sure no, like that's like the Obama video. did. But 10% is better than 0%. Mm-mm. But it's not to help you. It's the release valve so you, the system keeps going. Is it possible to steel man the case that... Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> that not all politicians are corporatists? Or, or maybe uh, how would you approach that? For example, this podcast has a bunch of sponsors and I give zero fucks uh, about what they think about what I'm saying. Like they have zero control over me. Um, maybe you could say that's not that's because it's not a lot of money or maybe it's... Maybe I'm a unique person or something like this, but um, I just think it's possible to have, and I would like to believe a lot of politicians are this way, that they have ideas, and while they take money, they kind of uh, see it as a game that, you know, you accept the money, kind of go to certain parties, hug people and so on, but it doesn't actually fundamentally compromise uh, your integrity on issues you actually care about. I can steal man almost anything. Uh, I can steal man Trump. I can steal man conservatives easily, right? Uh, corporate politicians is a hard one. So mm -hmm. first, um, no, right. they're, it's not all politicians. Man, and shout out M. Have you guys seen Agenda 47 on Trump's website? Yes, we have. Actually, you know what? Man, I appreciate you, M. I appreciate you so much for saying that. Because Agenda 47, we can also break that down. But here's a problem with that. There's something I kind of want to bring to everybody's attention. Because this is quite concerning, right? So I was doing a little research because they said, oh, Kamala Harris's policies is on her website and all that good stuff. And I'm like, really? Well, sure, let's go to KamalaHarris.com. That's cool. And, you know, of course, donate, donate. Meet Harris, you know, it's a nice little biography that you, they give you. 
you know, no, no real policies, but they do give you a nice biography and it's, it's cute and all, but you know, no, no real policies here, just a biography. And then for some reason now, let, let's go ahead and take a glance over at what Trump got going on, on his website. You feel me? Let's take it. Let's take a, a nice old glance. Cause you, you're going to notice something very strange and isn't, <sighs> I'm not trying to be so anti Kamala, but it's kind of lazy how they set up her stuff. Now, of course, donations. All right, that's expected. I can understand that. Everybody want donations, but oh wait, hold on. Is 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 this policies? Agenda forty seven? Wait, hold on. Are these policies? So hold on, hold on. Why doesn't Kamala have policies on her website, but Trump does? Like, you know, seal the border, stop the immigrant invasion, <laughs> invasion, carry out the largest deportation operation in American history, end inflation, make America affordable again. Like, even if you don't agree with some of these, like, stop outsourcing and turn the United States into a manufacturing superpower. Like, come on now. Even if you don't agree with these, at least he's saying it. At least he's telling you. You can go on DonaldTrump.com and go ahead, look, look at his policies, see if you like him or not. But when I go on Kamala's website, there was no policies. So that's just one thing I just did not like about, you know, that whole setup right there. I thought it was a bit disingenuous to not have your information on your website. You start out nice and easy. Tom Massey, uh, and now Hawley and Gates taking, uh, not taking corporate PAC money. Uh, Bernie, the squad, they don't take corporate PAC money. You could disagree on either end of those uh folks on social issues but generally they are a thousand times less corrupt they're more honest uh and part of the reason you might hate them man but feelings that's democracy right <laughs> but feelings shout out vladstein man <laughs> nah for real shout out vladstein because but feelings it's like no 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 well i can give you the facts but the way you feel about trump though is just so strong it's like that's what i'm saying that's all i brought up earlier in I brought this up earlier in the in the live. I was like, bro, I feel kind of bad for some of these Kamala Harris supporters because there's such a vitriol towards anybody who have a different opinion. There are some of y'all who's reasonable people. Actually, most of y'all are reasonable people. I just got the bad ones in the chat tonight. That that's how I see it. But that's not a good look for who y'all are, though. Y'all gotta understand that, yo, yo, you gotta stop with all this Trump hate stuff. We wanna pull them to our side like we want to, calling them an idiot. Is not gonna be. It's not gonna work. You can call it misinformed. We we can take that one to the chin. We can be like, oh, all right, it sucks to be called it, but I can I can hear him out. But when you call him an idiot, you this, you that, you slow, this and that. Come on now, it just makes y'all look bad and hate. Don't come from above, so it kind of puts you below us or below the Trump supporters. So don't hate. Don't, don't show hate towards them. Come on now. The squad is because they're so honest. Don't do they that. tell you their real opinion on social issues that you really disagree with. A lot of the corporate politicians won't do that because they're trying to get as many votes as possible so they can fillet their donors uh, when they get into office and do all their favors for them. Okay, but you see, I'm already falling apart on the steel manning of corporate yeah, politicians. Let's like zoom in on that. So if you take corporate PAC money, you're that's it. You're you're corrupted. I'm, like, can you imagine yourself? Say you're a politician. Yeah. You're a president. Uh, you're a human being, you're a person with integrity, you're a person who thinks about the world. You're saying if I was a corporate PAC and I gave you a billion dollars, you still, you'd, you'd be, I could tell you anything. So Lex, it, everything is a spectrum. Humanity is a spectrum. So can you find outliers who could take corporate PAC money and still be principled enough to resist this lure? Yeah. Uh, and and I would hope that I would be a person like that, but I wouldn't take over back money. But if you force me to, uh, mm -hmm. I think I would still stay principled and do it. Could you find 10, 20 other people in the country? Yeah. But on average, that is not what will happen. What will happen is they will take the money and do exactly as they are told. See, I think most people have integrity. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hold on. So what I'm more worried about is when you take corporate PAC money, it's not that you are immediately sold is over time over time that's true so yeah i get it um but i wonder if if the integrity that i think most people have can withstand the gradual slippery slope of uh uh of the effect of corporate money which if if what i'm saying is true that most people have integrity 
one of the ways to solve the effect of corporate money is term limits because it takes time to corrupt people you can't buy them immediately and then the term limits can uh, <laughs> uh for the listener <laughs> jenk is uh shaking his head okay. yeah right. no so look you're right that uh, over time it gets way worse and as we talked about earlier biden's a great example of that comes in anti-corruption winds up being totally pro-corruption by the end mm. um and but he was also here for almost all of it as we started in a world that was not run by money in politics and is now completely run by money in politics so uh does it get worse over time cinema is a christian cinema and uh arizona is a great example of that comes in as a progressive doesn't want to take pack money uh cares about the average person etc uh over time she becomes the biggest corporatist in, in the senate uh and a total disaster uh, but if you say that the majority of uh, politicians have, in, I don't know if this is what you're saying, mm -hmm. majority of politicians have integrity? Um, no, let's start at the majority of human beings. Human and beings. I think that politicians are not, they are not a special group of like sociopaths. I think they're, they are. They lean a little bit towards that direction, but they're not like only well, sociopaths well. going to politics. It's like you have to have some sociopathic qualities, I think, to go into politics, but, but is they're not completely yeah, sociopathic. I, I think that. they do have integrity because uh, sometimes for very selfish reasons, it's not all about money, even for a selfish person, for a narcissist. It's, it's also about being recognized for having had positive impact on the world. Yeah, I get it. But all right, so let's break it down. Okay. So first, uh, human beings, then we'll get to politicians. Do human beings have integrity? Well, it's a spectrum. So some people are, have enormous integrity. Some people have no integrity. So there is not one type or character, right? Yeah. So some people have a ton of empathy for other human beings, and they literally feel it. Like, I feel the pain of someone else. And I'm not alone. Most people feel the pain of someone else. If you see a, on video a baby being hurt, an overwhelming majority of of human beings will go, no, right? Mm. You have empathy. That's a natural okay. feeling that you have. Some people have no empathy because they're on the extreme end of the spectrum. Uh, serial killers and Donald Trump. I'm weak. Uh, okay. Yo. And so I'm, I'm partly joking, but mm. not really. He oh. has never de demonstrated any empathy that I have ever seen for any other human being. I'm going to trigger some right wingers because they think every terrible thing he said is out of context or joking or not real or fake news. But his chief of staff didn't make it up. He called uh, people who went into the military suckers and losers. Why? Why did he say that? If just hang with me for a second, don't okay. have your head explode. Okay. And I'm not saying the likes, I'm saying to the right wingers out there, right? So the reason is because if you're like trump and you don't you literally don't feel the empathy but why you think why the hell would i go in the military get killed for someone else what a sucker no i'm going to stay out of the military i'm going to stay alive i'm going to make a ton of money and i'm going to look out for myself and he assumes okay. because everybody does this you assume that everyone thinks like you do but they now, don't now uh... I have to give him pushback, but all right. But he visited the graves of those, you know, the Golden Star families, and Kamala and Biden didn't. And the Golden family exposed them by saying that, yeah, we called them. We called the Biden administration. They didn't even reply back. We hit up Trump. He pulled up. So to say that he don't care about, you know, uh, veterans, well, he could have just did that for show. I can give you that, maybe, possibly. But the fact that he showed up does say a lot, though. It does say a lot. At least he's willing to keep the image and not just spit in their face. I give him that. If if it was just for show, at least he did it for the image. To not do it at all is like, bro, twenty times worse. It's like, man, you could have just pulled up there for the image of it at least, at least. But in my honest opinion, I do think Trump respects the soldiers and all that. So I don't agree with him on that. But if that is the case, uh, at least he showed up. So Trump assumes everybody's as much of a dirtbag as he is, and because he doesn't feel it, he doesn't feel the empathy. And so he's like, yeah, you'd be an idiot, a sucker and a loser to go into the military and have a sacrifice for other people. So you see the spectrum. Even if you think Trump's not on that end and you think I'm wrong about that, you get that there are people on that end. Now, you know, if I could find exact proof of that, because that's what I'm saying. I, 
You telling me that somebody that don't like him no more, he said that, I can't trust that. Like, I'd have to hear an exact recording of him calling them suckers. Like, oh, yeah, them people in the military are suckers. And, like, ah, I ain't them. Ha, ha, ha. It's like, hey, what up, last thing, man? He, man, shout out last thing for the $5 super chat, man. Which party told the middle class coal miners to just learn to code, but they care for blue collar workers? Strange. They say one thing and do another. Hey. Hey, they did say that wild stuff. And I got to admit, the left does kind of have a bit of a hatred for, well, blue collar workers, people who put their hands on stuff, who low-key help America. I ain't gonna lie, they help the world go around. They help this whole world function, the, our whole society function, the people who put their hands on stuff, but they're getting the most disrespect. Look, at the end of the day, if all the computers go off, we still got people with who can put their hands on stuff and do that work. They, stick, they can still go. Them coders, hey, Ain't too much for you. But hey, man, shout out Blast Team, though. I, I do remember that. I do remember they said learn to code. I'm like, well, that's disrespectful, but okay. Right? So you have a spectrum of integrity, empathy, et cetera. That's what I would call your hardware. You layer on top of that your software, okay? And the software is cultural influences. Your parents, cultural media, influences. your friends, all these are cultural influences. So now when you're... In certain industries, they value more integrity. So mm -hmm. okay. religious leaders, if you're doing it right, which is also very rare, right? But if you're doing it right, you're supposed to have empathy for the poor, the needy, the whole flock, right? Yeah. So that profession is incentivizing you towards empathy and integrity, True. okay? And even then... <laughs> Mm -hmm. A giant amount of people abuse it, right? But okay, good. Yeah, people like, well, Nancy Pelosi. Like, think about it. You're not supposed to be able to do inside trading. Or a person in her position is not supposed to do that. She's not, it's, there's a law against it, but she does it anyway. That's zero integrity. But, you know, we let them get away. Or we, well, we kind of know. Think about it. We can't really definitely prove it, but hey, man, she's making some pretty good calls out there in the market. Uh, what can I say? In politics, it creates incentives for the opposite. So no integrity. This is oh yeah, this brought back back to my one point. This is why I say it's hard for me to trust broke people in politics because when they come in broke, they leave rich, and that's a problem to me. I'm like, hold on here, pause, pause. Did you just spend four years just coming up? Like, how the hell you coming here like a half a mil, maybe less, and now you're leaving out fifty like fifty mil up. Like, what does that make sense? Like, hold on, how how you do that? I thought you were supposed to be helping the people, putting monies in our pockets. Sure, it's cool for you to leave with a couple mil, but 50? 50. Like, whoa, what, what was you doing? Integrity. And that Obama. software, to your point, over time, gets stronger and stronger and stronger until it takes over. Now, you might have someone with a lot of integrity, like Tom Massey, right? Uh, a Republican from Kentucky. And... You, whether I agree with him or disagree with him on policy, I get that the brother is actually doing it based on principles. And there isn't any amount of money you can give Tom Massey for him to change his principles. Mm -hmm. Why? He's on the principled end of the spectrum as a human being, right? Yeah. So is Bernie. They're on the same part of that, that spectrum, right? But for most people, the great majority of the spectrum, if you overload them with software that incentivizes them to not have integrity, they will succumb. Yeah. And now let's switch to politicians. Yeah, if and you throw enough dollar bills in their face, he pretty much saying them. They may walk in with good intentions. They may walk in with the no, I'm gonna do right by the American people. But if you throw enough dollars in their face, they might just be like, oh, well, f the American people, man. Let me get my money real quick. Then you feel me, like. But then there's some people who you know they, they dangle the dollar and they just be like, nah, let me just stick to helping my people. And I'm going to be real with you, those politicians aren't the one you hear about too much. Those the ones, the ones that are propped up all over TV, uh, the, you can kind of tell who sold out to the corporations by the ones who are all on TV. Because, you know, corporate media only pushes those who follow along. Particular. Why do I think that, that they're, Democrats or on average, or, or far more likely to be on the sociopathic you don't you don't part of no, the spectrum? You don't get no coverage. Because of the incentives and disincentives. So this changes every congressional cycle. And when just Democrats were- Man, and shout out Julius King for the $5 super chat, man. Trump got fake diagnosed on bone spurs to get out of the Vietnam draft and then insulted John McCain for being a prisoner of war. 
<laughs> now that is a bit extreme. Like for real, he got fake diagnosed with bone spurs to get out of the Vietnam draft. <laughs> Damn, you know what's crazy? But didn't uh, you know what? I know Bush did something like that too, though. That's crazy. You know what? I can believe that just cause just cause Bush kind of did something like that. But damn, damn. Now to John McCain, to the old John McCain point. Now it is effed up to make fun of him as a prisoner of war. But one thing I did not like about John McCain because he did not need to be president. He did not need to because this man wanted war with everybody. I mean everybody. It was damn near derangement of how much war he wanted. So like. Trust me, America got saved when John McCain didn't become president, okay? We got saved with Obama on that note, because, hey, it was either we go to war with everybody or we just have Obama bomb people in Africa for oil. It, it was like a lose-lose, but choose a, choose a lesser evil. Winning a lot, it got like all the way down to 87.5%. But on average, for congressional elections, the person with more money Appreciate wins you, Julius 95% King. I'm have to look that one up. It doesn't matter if they're a Julius liberal or conservative. King. My bad. Jules King, man. I'm going to have to look that one up, man. Appreciate you. Republican or Democrat or any ideology they have, 95%. Hmm. Okay. So now let's say you got the 5% that went in uh, that are not hooked on the money. Well, they're going to get a primary challenge. Then they're going to get a general election challenge. And 95% of the time, the one with more money wins. So eventually this system cycles through until only the cor almost only the corrupt are left. Wait, hold on a second. Is that, is that real? 95%? So if you have more money, 95% of the time you win, huh? Yes. I'd like to believe that's less the case for for example for uh, higher you get yes that's true you're right yeah. so you know why so the presidential race is ironically in some ways the least corrupt so let's dive into why if you're running a local race anywhere in the country you're going to get almost no press coverage meaning a congressional race right if you're running a senate race in the middle of montana you're going to get almost no media coverage. So that's where your money in politics has the most effect because then you could just buy the airwaves. You outspend the other guy, you get all the ads, plus you get the friendly media coverage because you just bought a couple of million dollars of ads in the middle of Montana. So the local news loves you, the TV stations, the radio stations, the papers. So some of the papers are... All right, man, Jules King. I have to fact check that. Fact check you on that. According to the Atlantic and Business Insider... It was actually Trump's dad who got him deferred out of there. Yeah, he the one who put in. Trump was, well, I'm not sure if he was ready to go or not because he was going to have to go regardless, but his dad's the one who held that up. Trump didn't didn't really get to fake anything. If anybody faked anything, it was his dad, and he didn't tell Trump. So that's pretty much what they're both saying. It was like, yeah, it was pretty much his dad that sent in that stuff for him to pretty much be excused from the draft. Their principle, they might Is say, oh, happen? no, but overall, oh. they're not calling you a radical. They're not calling Plenty you anything. And you're buying those races. But when you get to the presidential race, that's much harder because presidential race, you have earned media, free media. That so over it is a fact that Donald Trump did avoid the draft. That's a fact. Was it due to bone spurs? Well, that he put in for. Nope. His dad, his dad kind of got him off, just like every rich kid that dad got him off. <laughs> Yeah, trust me, no rich kid went to war. They was like, yeah, we know what's happening in Vietnam. We're not doing that. And let's be real. If you're a rich man and we, we everybody knew kind of what the Vietnam War was, you was like, yeah, I know what's going on down there. My kid ain't going. Overwhelms paid media. 